Tammy and Friends. And since we are calling it Tammy and Friends, I really wanted the first episode to be about the importance of the inner circle of friends. Mm. We can have all kinds of friends. And we do a lot of times. I mean, with Facebook and social media, my goodness, we could have thousands of friends. But it's really about that inner circle. So today, my first guest on Tammy and Friends is one one incredible woman. Mm -hmm. She's encouraging and she really makes an impact wherever she goes. Her name is Shelly Brown out of Orlando, Florida. And she's not only just somebody that I'm bringing on and have never met face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball. Shelly is one of those girls that, you know, whenever I drink out of this coffee cup, I wish you lived next door. She's one of those gals that I wish lived next door because Shelly is one of those people that I call a vault. Because no matter what you tell her, Mm. um, she is inner circle friend Mm. because she is a vault and it stays right there with her. And we're going to get started and you're going to see just what I'm talking about. Welcome, Shelly. Thank you. I am so excited to be here with you. The only uh, thing that would be better is to be sitting on that red couch behind you right next to you right now. Well, you have sat on that red couch before, so therefore, that couch is always there if you want to sit on that couch again. Mm. Shelly, whenever um, we talk about friends, and when people say, who are the first people that you think that you want to call whenever you get really good news, or whose shoulder do you want to cry on Mm. whenever you get heartbreaking news? Who do you want to laugh with? Who do you want to... Share those things that you would never share with anybody else. Who are those people that you want to share? Maybe a prayer request, a very personal Mm -hmm. prayer request. These are the people that are the inner circle. Right. So let's kick it off with, Shelly, why do we even need godly friends in the first place? Oh, my goodness. You know, we were created for relationship. We were never meant to do this, uh, to do life alone. And uh, so one of my favorite passages about friendship really is in Ecclesiastes, where uh, it talks about uh, two are better than one. And we use that a lot in marriage ceremonies, and it's very relevant in marriage ceremonies, but the context of it was really in friendship. And it's saying that two are better than one because when one falls down, the other one's there to pick them up, right? And um, that when one, I think it's in here, I wrote it down in verse 12, it's chapter four, verse 12. It says, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand them. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And see, the enemy wants to keep us isolated. So we're vulnerable to the enemy and to stay in that pit, but it's the godly friends and just surrounding ourselves with um, just people who will go to the throne on your behalf, godly friends who know where to go and um, who know how to keep that confidence, right? Um, That's exactly right, Shelly, because when I say a vault, mm -hmm. you are one of those people and not everybody can be described as a person who's a vault, who Mm -hmm. you know that when you tell that person that it stays right there. And that is so important. Trust Mm. is so important. When you say trust, the inner circle has to be Mm. those women that you trust. It really is. And one of the things, um, as I have actually prayed for friends uh, throughout the years, and just when I felt like I had a void and I was um, wanted that closer inner circle, one of the things that I prayed for, which was really a non-negotiable to me, was that they were trustworthy, that they could keep a confidence. Um, and that I literally would take that specific need to the Lord and say, Lord, just bring me somebody that I can trust, that I can bear my soul to. Those kind of friends that are in the inner circle, mm. they're, they're different. Yeah. I, I often will say whenever I'm speaking from a stage and whenever I'm talking about friendship, it's kind of like if you drop a rock in the water and how you get all these circles that come mm. around that rock. Yeah. We've got, that's how friendship is. Mm-hmm. You, that first circle that is full of those people that you can depend on, Mm -hmm. that you can trust. Mm -hmm. God did make that kind of friendship and we're designed for that. And I have found Shelly that whenever, whenever I'm speaking somewhere about friendship, I will have so many women who will come up to me and they will say, I don't have those kind of friends. Mm, Yeah. 
they often will say, will you pray with me so that I will have those kind of friends? Mm -hmm. I do believe in order to have friends like that, you have to be a friend like that also. Yes. Yes, you and do. You do. We, we can, it can't just be all one-sided and not the other. And so trust and confidentiality, all of that kind of stuff comes with both sides doing that. So when it comes to godly friends, to you, what are some of the things that make those inner circle friends different than the outer circle friends? Those inner circle friends, that they're the praying friends, they know where to go. And uh, they are going to talk to the father about you, not to other people about you. Shelly, one of the things that with me, with that close knit group, that inner circle is mm -hmm. that they will hold you accountable. Mm -hmm whenever you step across that line. Now, there's a lot of people who say they're your friends, but will they ever actually say, whoa, girl, mm. you need to back up and think about what you just said, or yeah. you need to back up and think about what you just did. Mm -hmm. I love some of the people who are in my inner circle that if, that if I get out of line, they will quickly, not so much as tell me what their opinion is, but they will tell me what God's opinion mm. of that is. And yeah. that will instantly make me want to get back in line. So when it comes to accountability, I don't get that a lot of times mm. outside of that inner circle. Because right. a lot of times outside that inner circle, people will just go along with whatever you say. Right. Or they'll just be quiet and not say anything at all. Have you found that to be also? I think so. You know, and it might be rooted in insecurity, perhaps, of... Uh, afraid that you're going to lose, you know, they're going to lose us as their friend if they do speak truth to us. But really, we have to be committed to speaking the truth in love to one another. And uh, yeah, um, pointing them to the cross, constantly pointing them to, to, to Jesus, whether they are getting out of line, or even if it's uh, just some challenges in their life, instead of adding fuel to their fire, you know, they're, they're speaking truth into them. And That's exactly right. And you know, some people listening to this may think, well, I don't want any friends like that, because they sure don't sound fun. <laughs> Let me tell you, oh, my. My most, oh, the most fun that I will ever have are with those friends that I can trust with anything yes. that I say to them. Yes. The ones that I can laugh louder with yes. are the ones that have cheered me on whenever they have seen me so far down. Mm -hmm. And they've grabbed hold of my hand and they've threw, they've pulled me back up and they've and they've prayed for me. Mm -hmm. Those are the friends that I literally can laugh so hard with. Oh. And you know. Friends are going to influence us whether we want them to or not. Mm, that's right. So it's, so we have to be very careful who we associate with. Mm -hmm. If we associate with angry people, mm. then we're going to have a shorter fuse. Mm. If we associate with people who are using terrible language, mm. we got to be careful. Yeah. If we associate with people who are prone to gossip, right. we've got to be careful because mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I have been in a circle before where there were, there were women who were really gossiping mm. and yeah. I knew that I needed to, to walk away from that circle. I knew that I needed to walk away and because that was not what was going on. I didn't want to be a part of that. And even though I wasn't saying anything, my immediate thought was, well, if I just stand here and say nothing, it's going to be okay. But I was still so convicted. Yeah. And, and I knew that I needed to leave mm. that, that setting right there. I knew I needed to leave, but I thought to myself, now, if I leave, I'm going to offend this mm -hmm. person. So instead of leaving, I just stayed there, even though I knew I should have left. Mm. Well, the next day when and anybody who's going to gossip like that, they're going to gossip about you or they're going to make things up. They're going to do that. Yes. And the next day, the woman they were gossiping about called me so angry because they said I was saying all these different things. Mm. And I said, you know what? I never opened my mouth. Mm. I never opened my mouth, but I knew that I was supposed to leave that setting mm. and I did not leave. So I didn't obey. 
So we've got to be very careful because friends are extremely influential. And when you get around friends who are that inner circle, mm -hmm. I want to hear your experience with this also, but I'm going to say we can talk about anything. We can talk about the Lord. I love Jesus talk with them. Yes. Yes. Can you talk about Jesus with everybody? Mm. Yeah. Having those heart to hearts, you know, you know that you can, I call it kind of those let your hair down kind of friends where you can just um, share the deepest part of your heart. You trust them, um, but you can belly laugh with them, like you said, as well. Uh, I, I was down in South Florida this past weekend. I uh, had an opportunity to serve um, with a very good friend of mine. Uh, for a weekend of ministry. And uh, on Saturday, I stayed at her house. So when all the girls left after a really intense day, it was three days straight, uh, full days after they left, it was just her and me. And um, the first night, I mean, we, we were exhausted. So, um, but we just had a sweetheart to heart. The next night we were still pretty exhausted, but um, just the silliest things, maybe it was pure exhaustion and that was good. But I mean, we had the best belly laughs and it was, we had an absolute blast. And then um, I think it was the it was the third day, I believe. Uh, I'm just I'm observing her and I'm, she was leading. So I was there to support her. And just it was such a joy to watch her uh, pour into these ladies and to be able to support her in doing that as well. But I told I just stopped her at one point and because um, she was so authentic uh, and she's I've watched her grow so much in the Lord over these last four or five years. And I just stopped her and I said, Tanya, you are so good for me. I said, I, I love being around you. I love, um, she sharpens me. She challenges me to be greater for the Lord and to have a deeper compassion. She ministers to the most, to some really challenging situations and some women really, a lot of brokenness. And she weeps over them. She cries for them. And I watch her and I'm like, I want that heart just like that. And I've literally said that to the Lord. It's not, and it's, I think it's in a, it's a godly jealousy of like, give me that, what breaks, you know, her heart's breaking for them. I wanted my heart to break like that. Right. So it's, it, I said, you're so good for me. And so those are the ones that I just want to surround myself by around um, that's give me the greatest, um, the greatest joy, the encouragement, light a fire under me and have a blast like you can't have a blast you have the wrong friends that's <laughs> it you know i often will say if your friends aren't cheering you on that's right wiping your tears if they don't know what's going on then maybe you need to find a new set of friends mm -hmm. yes because 100%. that inner circle of friends they're going to be truly happy for you when something mm -hmm. happens in your life mm -hmm. they're not going to be jealous they're, they're not going to compete with you. They're right. going to be truly happy and they're, and they're celebrating with you. They're also going to listen. That's right. I have a good friend named Rita. Rita's been my friend mm. for, oh my goodness, almost, mm. almost, you know, right at 26, 27 years. We were, we were in our twenties when we became friends. We've been through a lot together. We've been through a lot of changes in each other's lives, but one thing has never changed. We've always rooted for each other. We've always wiped each other's tears. Mm -hmm. We've we've always been there to listen. Have we messed up and had to say, forgive me? Both of us have had to do that. But one of the things I love about her is that when we're, sometimes she'll take road trips with me whenever I'm speaking or if we're going on a girl trip or whatever. We talk about, and we get excited about it, about what God is doing. Mm -hmm in each other's lives whenever whenever we are driving. I mean, we talk about it. I love it. Those kind of conversations, mm -hmm. they don't make you feel dirty afterwards because right. you've talked about somebody. Right. Those kind of conversations make you, make, they just pump you up. Mm -hmm. They do. And, and I know you know exactly what I mean because you're very much that way. I know I came to Florida with you and, and I, I can still... In my mind, I can't unsee whenever your little convertible car was driving away from the airport. And I get a little teary mm -hmm. because I just loved our time together. The things we talked about, the laughter we had. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I can't wait to do it again. Whenever we first got on 
this show today when I saw your face. I was so excited. <laughs> and that's uh, because, it. you know, the thing about, to me, the thing about that inner circle of friends, some mm -hmm. people think that it has to be your friends that you've had forever. Right. Yeah. Elaborate on that. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, we have seasons, right? And like you mentioned, Rita, she's your inner circle and she is one of your long time friends. You know, when we don't let others in, newer friendships in, we are cheating ourselves uh, out of what could be some of the deepest relationships um, of our lives. And, you know, we think sometimes that that inner circle only can only be like three people, right? Because Jesus had his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, right? And they got to go everywhere with him. But uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be that small. It's a smaller circle, yes. right? But, uh, you know, the more we grow and the more seasons change, uh, we're going to have, if we will allow them in and, uh, and we use that discernment and y'all use, oh my goodness, pray and use godly discernment as to who you do let in. Uh, right. You know, right. not everybody's out for your best interest. That's and right. so use, um, use discernment and just ask the Lord. And if you have some red flags, take it to the Lord, let him really um, show you that maybe this person, you know, because we're going to be a friend to everybody, right? That's but right. there's, it's okay to not let everybody in to that place in your world where um, they are your really your fully trusted friend, uh, okay. where, where they get access to those parts of your heart, right? And your world. And it's okay for that. It doesn't mean you love them less. Right. It just means you're using wisdom um, in who you give access. That's to. an excellent point. It's an excellent point. Because we can't just... Um, if we tell everything to everyone, yeah. there's going to be a disaster. Right. Just, there is, you yeah. know, you are part of the Christian communicators. When, yes. And mm. when you get these, those women together, oh, it's yeah. like we've known each other for so long. Yeah. And, and we're always bringing new people in. Mm -hmm. Right. However, it's like, it's like it's building this team of people who are very much alike, mm -hmm. who are like-minded. Right. Is that how you feel about that too? Yeah, that's the exact word I was going to use is like-minded. Uh, and it is, Tammy, I'm telling you, it's like nothing I've experienced um, where you, it's, you know, the conference, of course, and I know this isn't about the conference, but I just have to right. say this, that the conference, it is intentionally kept small, right? So uh, you have an opportunity to really get to know women on, on a deeper level, but it's like God has handpicked for, I've been to two now, two, two in a row, two years in a row, it's like God handpicked those women for that year, for this year, for next year, it's going to be the same. And there is that like-mindedness, there is that heart, there's never been any kind of competition or uh, jealousies even, where that's we right. just, like, and that's a rare thing. Because you get it with a group of women and there is competition. I don't, I'm sorry, but there just is. There's competition. There's jealousies. That's, right. yeah. That's exactly right. And so as we, as we close today's show, I just want to tell you that mm. some, some people, Shelly, some women have never experienced this level yeah. of friendship. Mm. And they're lonely. Yeah. And I do believe that God gives us the desires of our heart. Mm -hmm. What is so difficult for some people, though, is that they think that that friend has to be, has to live near them, has mm -hmm. to be in the same town. I have found that it's not that way. I have inner circle friends mm -hmm. all over the United States who I could trust with whatever needed to be said. It's a small group, yeah. but they live in different parts of the United States. And we can come together. And when we come together, it's just, it's a sweet, sweet time. Mm -hmm. And so... I know that God gives us the desires of our heart and I know that he created friendships. So he wants us to have this kind of friend. So Shelly, would you mind just leading in a prayer mm. for the woman out there who doesn't have this kind of friend? Yeah, I would love to. Thank you. I would love to. Before I do, I would just encourage, you know, as I pray, I just encourage you also to pray and have your list of what attributes you really are looking for in a friend, in that close friend, because everyone has different personalities. You have different needs, right? So take that list to the Lord. And like Tammy said, I, he does give us the desires of our heart when they align with his. And this is his desire for us to have godly 
friends in our lives. So let me pray for us. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you for every one who is watching on the other side of the screen. Lord, I just pray that there was something that uh, spoke deeply to her, um, encouraged her, that um, is giving her just a new sense of hope. Yes. Lord, I know that there is a lot of loneliness and a lot of um, women who feel all alone, like they have nobody that they can depend on, nobody that they can trust. No, they haven't been able to sit down with a friend and just bear their soul maybe ever, or for some, it's been years. Lord, I just, would you just minister to their hearts right now in the name of Jesus? Would you just comfort them? Would you encourage them? Would you um, give them a glimpse of what you have in store for them? Oh, give them the desires of their heart. Oh God, it was never your intention for us to be left alone and to do life alone, to be in isolation. Lord, would you show her how much she's loved right now? Give her a glimpse of how much you love her. You are our best friend. You're the perfect friend. Lord, would you just put women in her life that would encourage her, that would lift her up and give her those desires? Oh, God, is my prayer. Thank you so much. And we just ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Shelly. And I just want to end today. Also, you can hear my phone ringing in the background, probably. The only time it's ringing, I forgot to turn the ringer off. But let me just say, and that's probably a good friend. I'll look at probably it like that. Is. That's right. There you go. But, um, I want to leave by just saying that friends not only do everything that we just talked about, mm. but, but friends also, they're there when you feel like no one else is there. Yeah. True friends really are. And those are the kind of, they, we're talking about the kind of friends that you may not have seen them in a very long time. Mm. But the minute you see them, yeah. it goes right back to where it was the last time you left them. Yeah. That's the kind of friends we're talking about, my friends out there. And so you mm. are going to meet a lot of people on this show, which I hope that you find so interesting. But if you would like to know more about Shelly Brown, well, her website is up and coming. She's an amazing friend of mine, an amazing woman. And you will be able to find her at ShellyMBrown.com. M for magnificent. <laughs> Shelly, <laughs> ShellyMBrown.com. Yes. I look forward, Shelly, to having a conversation with you again because we, we always pick up where we left off. Yes, Thank and there's so much so to much. talk about. Oh, so much that we can't pack in this. Right. But thank you so much, Shelly, for being that kind of right. friend. Thank you that I'm so thankful to the Lord that you have crossed my path for a lot of reasons. All right. We will see you next time right. on Tammy and Friends.